Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first episode of Five Minutes Sarcoma Talk on Onco Daily. I'm Shushan Hovsepian, a pediatric oncologist uh, from Armenia, and I'm thrilled to be your host uh, today. Um, today, we have a privilege uh, to uh, speak with uh, Professor Leo Kager, who is the world-known uh, osteosarcoma expert, who is the head of uh, Santana Children's Research Institute and also outpatient clinic at Santana Children's Hospital in Vienna, Austria. Hello, Professor Kager. How are you? Hello, Susan. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> it was a great time having you here at, uh, in, in Vienna. Thank, thanks a lot. Yeah, I had the pleasure to meet, uh, to work with Professor Kager in a short time uh, in Vienna, and uh, he's an excellent expert in the field and also an excellent uh, personality. So uh, let's um, start uh, with uh, our questions uh, to shed light a little bit on uh, challenges uh, of uh, osteosarcoma treatment and research. So um, a little bit of history. How has the approach to treating pediatric osteosarcoma evolved in the last three decades? Yeah, coming back. So the, the very, very first important step was the Myers trial uh, in the U.S., uh, where the advantage of chemotherapy compared to surgery alone was proven. Two years ago, uh, work uh, starting working for two years in Memphis, Tennessee, and my my former boss Bill Evans, who became director of St. Jude uh, at that time, he asked me, "So Leo, can you tell me your uh, work in the field of osteosarcoma? Uh, uh, what have you achieved in the last fifteen years?" And actually, I said, uh, which drugs do you use? And I said, we use MAP and iphosphamide and VP16. And he said, but that was used 20 years ago, right? And I had to confess yes. And now, uh, 22 years later, we still use the same drugs as standard. So from the systemic treatment approach, there was not much progress. However, when it comes to the local therapy, there was really a progress made uh, in radiotherapy because osteosarcoma compared to Ewing sarcoma uh, is more radio resistant. But when you use uh, carbon ions and protons, especially in combination, uh, you can really uh, um, uh, re re uh, achieve a, a, a local tumor control. Yeah, uh, that's a little bit frustrating uh, not to have a treatment option um for so long time uh, but uh, hope, so we need to work uh, on that uh, to improve the systematic treatment and uh, uh, building on that uh, point uh, what are the current uh, gaps critical gaps that um, are in the research uh, field that uh, in your opinion need the special attention yeah i, I think it's wise to look at osteos plus and Ewing sarcomas. So in Ewing sarcomas, uh, we have made this progress. So when a treatment intensification is shown by the Koch group uh, with addition of iphosphamide VP16 to the standard backbone, that resulted in significant improved survival. The same was true when we did the compressed, when, when the Koch group did the compressed treatment. So this is now the standard to compress the chemo treatment and local control rate in a five-year event free survival in patients with uh, Ewing sarcoma and localized disease uh, is, is about 87% or so. And in osteosarcoma, it's 60%. So there is a huge gap. And now we have to figure out, so what is the difference? Why is osteosarcoma, why are, do these uh, osteosarcoma cells migrate so often to the lung? What is the difference uh, in comparison to Ewing sarcoma cells? So in Ewing, at least in osteosarcoma, when you have a relapse, you have a second chance. In Ewing sarcoma, it's very hard to get the long, become a long-term survival when you relapse. 
uh, and to figure out what are the mechanisms be behind that gives rise to such a high number of metastases. Uh, I think this is a very um, important task ahead. Yeah, that's um, true. And uh, but uh, is there uh, anything uh, that you find uh, be transformative uh, in the breakthrough in the treatment? Maybe also for from uh, coming from preclinical um, field, is there something that uh, you think that is uh, really promising for the future? Yeah, uh, there is one crew group of, of drugs, you know, very good. Uh, these are the DKIs, especially the cabosantinib. And uh, the COC is planning uh, or is performing already a trial with frontline cabosantinib. And here in Europe, we have uh, founded the Foster Consortium to fight osteosarcoma through European research first time that we have all uh, countries, all, all, almost all countries uh, in Europe participating in such a, uh, in, in such a consortium. Uh, and we're happy that we can also now go into a trial with uh, a chemo backbone plus uh, uh, at on uh, treatment. Yeah, that's an incredible progress to have a consortium working uh, specifically on osteosarcoma after this long time. And uh, I always think that collaborative effort will uh, always pay off. So uh, hopefully we, have, we will have results uh, very soon. And um, now as we are wrapping up our conversation and uh, stepping uh, from uh, research, I would like to ask you uh, about uh, personal, your personal experience. What uh, motivated you uh, initially to specialize in osteosarcoma uh, research and treatment? So uh, the as, as I started more than thirty years ago, uh, we had two different boards. One was the solid tumor, and the other was the liquid uh, uh, malignancies. And that was on the solid tumor, <laughs> and so that was why I started to become um, uh, getting more involved in the solid tumors. And then it was, of course, uh, the fantastic environment, the environment of the COS group and the many other friends uh, um, throughout the world. Uh, and now it's I'm close to retirement. And uh, now it's very important uh, in leukemia, we can cure uh, that many patients already. But now it's high time uh, to have this also uh, for our osteosarcoma patients. And so um, very simple why I came into the field, but why I stick now in the field is uh, to get also um, um, ad 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 adequate treatment uh, for the osteosarcoma patients. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much for sharing your perspectives. And also, I think it is very interesting for young oncologists to learn a little bit about from uh, personal experience uh, of the experts. And uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you for being uh, with us today. And we hope uh, that our episode, uh, our listeners will find informative and engaging. And let's continue to learn, grow and uh, support each other on this journey. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for listening. Thank you very much and warmest greetings to all friends in Yerevan. Thanks a lot.